Oh, I was just blown away by it. I just really was taken for the ride. I, I, I was able to kind of remove myself from it and be swept away. And I, I just, I got really, really kind of, I mean, I got emotional, but I also really just felt happy to be a part of it. I felt really proud. I, there's a lot of parts of this in me. I, I love my wife the way Oscar's character loves Olivia in this wow. film. Um, saying a lot. I, I, uh, I write him a little bit more romantic <laughs> and, and better than I am <laughs> better of looking. Um, uh, and, you know, I, this, I lost my, uh, my mother 10 years ago. And I, it was a, I, I've been saying a body blow that kind of took my legs out for, uh, for yeah. a year. And a year to the day after she died, I met my wife. And so a lot of what the themes of the film are, a lot of the issues it explores, a lot of the characters are kind of born out of feelings that I have and things I had inside of me that I wanted to expunge. And I think there's a lot of people who've been through really difficult things, whether in childhood or later, and they don't know if they deserve happiness. They don't know if it's there for them. They assume they've just been dealt a really hard hand in life, and yet there can be true bliss for those people too. And we're all sort of allotted certain amounts of pain and happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to trust that, that they go hand in hand. And I think this film explores thing, ugly, mean, cruel things that happen to people, but tries to remind that there's beauty that comes after that. There is no more important right more important message right now than to remind us that we are all connected. It doesn't matter if we're from different nations. And I think that it's fantastic that we're empathizing with people of completely different cultures. I also think it's really ambitious for a filmmaker to direct a film half in another language and to let it be subtitled and not just have people speaking English with accents. Right. Well, what's been really neat too is, is you know, taking, you know, normally these subtitled, subtitled films in another language are reserved for art houses and don't always make mm -hmm. it all over the country. And what's been really cool about this film is that it's getting a really wide release and it's going to play over the country. And I've been lucky enough to watch it play yeah. in the middle of the country and in places that don't normally get subtitled movies and theaters. And it's playing for people. And it's a reminder that if you don't underestimate what people will be interested in watching, like people will respond and, and react um, as you hope they will. So, yeah. You know, um, yeah, you go with people that you've watched their work and are fans of. Um, I would always thought Olivia was really funny, and, and I actually had seen her in a small movie that she did with um, Reed Moreno uh, called Meadowland. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have to get her for this film. Now, oh. And it's, it's a, and, uh, and, uh, but with everybody, Oscar Isaac was the first guy on board. And so when you get Oscar on board, it makes other actors really want to do your movie really badly. So even if the script was terrible, like I think Olivia probably would have wanted to do it and Annette would have maybe done it for me. And so I think it, it was a big thing to get Oscar on board early. It's so funny because I think Dan, I was lucky enough to see it with the audience last night, and I think Dan has, has a control over, the, over an audience, much like when you're in a stadium and people are doing the Mexican wave. Because I feel like everyone, everyone is 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 bursting out laughing and crying and and then gasping in shock. It was a real trip. I think it was it was really it was really wonderful to see it in with. It was like played like theatre. It was great. He's uncensored with himself and his own emotional life, and therefore he just knows how to tell the truth about mm -hmm. how he reacts to living in life, and uh, shares it on the page, and then. It has us, you know, enact it and puts it together for a tonic for us all. Mm. I think it's that he's incapable of not telling the truth, particularly at a time when truth is not highly regarded, and uh, that he is devoted to telling the truth no matter what the condition, whether it's the greatest joy or sadness or hope or unknown. And, uh, and I think that is something we're all starving for. I won the DNA jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have you tell that to my children on occasion as well. I had somebody want to talk to her to my wife. Now I need her to talk to my kids. <laughs> no, I mean it was. I was. I was saying to Mandy before. I was quite intimidated meeting him for the first time and having him play my grandfather. But he's 
so lovely and kind and envelops you in with his generosity and it was really fun we only had one day together but it was really yeah, fun i wish it had been so much more but we've got this yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, our, we, our one scene, that was yeah. it. We had one scene, but we, we did it. We got to do it over and over again. So and I was, I was sad when it was over. I think she's a, she's a, a surge of um, ferocious emotion. Um, I think she is the physical embodiment of everything that's happened in, in her head, and she's unashamed and she's unapologetic and it was really fun to play someone like that. You know what I always <laughs> say when I, when I have friends who have lost someone, I say I'm sorry for your loss but now it's our job to live for them as mm -hmm. well as our own life and I think that is what her character and Olivia did for those two glorious parents that she lost is that she lived extra. Mm -hmm. And sometimes extra is a little hard for some people to take, and sometimes it's a thank God moment. So, I think to to take in and live from moment to moment more, and um, love and appreciate each other, and accept that you know, being earnest and some sincerity is is what we need right now. privilege of understanding we're connected to each other yeah. globally throughout eternity and um, and not to feel that you have to be so careful and that you're so in charge and such a perfectionist one mm. person said to me once years ago well, that person can't get it out of their head that they're a perfectionist and that's the only thing and and they can't understand the only thing you can't achieve in life is perfection mm. you can't control life you can't control it and I think Dan's title is is uh, the, the thing, the only thing that controls life is life itself. I loved it. It was very beautiful to, to see like the whole picture of all the stories together. I was feeling like audience somehow. This movie is really nice that there are two languages yeah. like living together, right? Well, I actually like my first impression was I like the whole story a lot. It's it was not just about my character, you know. I was mm. feeling like I'm gonna be part of something bigger than my story, and that was really interesting yeah, because I've never too. been in that place. Um, I've been playing basketball for 17 years, and I learned that you have to be game and teamwork. That's right. the most important thing in life. And this, for the first time, it was like a way of playing basketball again with a lot of people that now the story is on your shoulders and then it's on my shoulders, but we are together doing this. This sensation, it really got me. And I love that. I like he's very, he's very different from me. And this was, wow, this was a challenge. Very, someone who almost, mm, doesn't laugh a lot and who who is really who he is and he knows I don't know if I know who I am mm. but I think that Javier knows who he is and who is Bella and who is um, Sachone and he's like a detective of human human beings I love that it was great yeah. he's such a talented writer and director and he was so helpful with us, like creating a very special and safe environment to shoot and giving us surprises, making sure we were very comfortable and like feel free to take risks mm -hmm. and to have fun with it. I think as a director just to, to have to work with so many actors and I guess we are all very different, you need to be talented to go through all this, right? And he was not just talented but fun and a pleasure working with him and he was very close to everyone and he was ready to listen to you and ready to be with you in a very big crew and it was it was kind of a perfect perfect companion and director for this movie it's kind of like let's let's get closer let's get together more now more than ever we need to talk about love and empathy and kindness right and compassion yeah and to know that death is around the corner and yeah. 
you never know. So let's be here now, yeah. open hearted. Hey, Vali here. So are you a big movie fan? Well, stay with me as I have some cool random facts for you. Due to a miscommunication on set in The Hateful Eight, Kurt Russell accidentally smashed an antique guitar from 1870 instead of a prop. The dog who played Toto in The Wizard of Oz received a higher salary than most of the people who played Munchkins. And lastly, Michael Caine was so terrified of Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight that he forgot his lines in the first scene they shot together. Do you know any other cool facts? Let me know below. And remember, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Bye bye!